Good morning guys, Sullivan here in Philadelphia. Today I'm going to be taking you through my extensive greenhouse research, sharing all the information I was able to find on specs and pricing. Uh, limited, of course, to the size that I was looking for. I'm not going to run through the pricing of uh, a 20 by 40 greenhouse since I'm looking for maximum of 120 square feet. But I, I was hoping this information would be helpful because one of the things that you're going to see that I ran into is that there's not as much transparent pricing at the higher end of greenhouses. And I feel like the industry would be better served and it would certainly be more efficient to provide a little more information on costs so that salespeople didn't have to spend a ton of time going back and forth with people if they're not in the same ballpark of the budget. So I'm going to take you through many choices from the very, very high end down to under that DIY style that you can do for very little investment. And then I'm going to share with you which one of these I chose and now have ordered for my Potage 2.0 renovation. And I should say I'm filming this in the morning. It's a little bit gray and gloomy. I am not fully caffeinated yet. I know that I really should film completely caffeinated, but uh, I made a ton of headway yesterday on the cleanup for the Potager area. And rather than moving all the bags of compost and soil, I decided to just lay out the new bed or start it with as much material as I had. So I am really sore and tired today. I'm gonna to take you through all my research and I'm a person that really likes to research. I think that there are lots of choices out there for gardening information. And unfortunately, I think some of the most followed, most subscribed garden channels don't always do enough research. So I'm gonna start all the way back at what is a greenhouse? And technically a greenhouse is a growing space that uses both heating and cooling to maintain a constant growing temperature. And these were historically made of glass and metal. And you can find old examples of them uh, predominantly in Europe where they were luxurious, they were extravagant follies, glass, metal, these were expensive materials, not to mention likely being heated by wood fires or coal or all kinds of things. Uh, I actually don't really know what they did. They probably did some primitive, more primitive version of evaporative cooling, but the goal was to maintain these equal temperatures so that you could grow whatever you wanted, no matter what the weather outside was. And so if you think about it from that point of view, it, it's an incredibly luxurious thing to have. So much of what we take for granted from a produce or a floral standpoint uh, would have been considered like the height of luxury. You know, the the Paris is full of, uh, well, the orangery, which was one of the palace growing spaces, greenhouses is now a museum, but it was it was considered like the height of luxury to be able to have like citrus in the middle of winter which we know now that that's the season for citrus from Florida and, and Southern California and places like that. But um, to be able to do that in Europe when you had no real thermostats and means to control the temperature, like that was really a luxury. Well, especially in England, greenhouses in particular are kind of part of most gardeners' plans because they are just so much more common in Europe. They are obviously becoming a thing here. Uh, and I'll get into that with some of the suppliers that I talked to about just like the boom. But gardening is so popular that um, lots and lots of unheated, untemperature regulated spaces are still called greenhouses. And they can be made out of glass or plastic, wood, metal, um, and polycarbonate is the main plastic, rigid plastic board material that most people use. There's also greenhouse plastics, hoop frame plastics, all kinds of stuff. So almost all of these across the gardening community are called greenhouses. And I'm not trying to be a stickler for that, but I do think it's important to when you're looking at whether you're following flower farmers or produce farmers, 
a, a hoop house is generally an unheated space. So to call it a greenhouse, it's really a cold frame. And I think that that's a really important distinction only from the point of view of what do you need your greenhouse to do? If you would like it to grow citrus in the middle of zone five winters, you're gonna need heat, which means it needs to not be a cold frame. It needs to have some sort of heat source. So hoop houses that do have supplemental heat or double layered air filled plastic or things like that, they're technically greenhouses because they have that temperature control but most people still refer to them as hoop houses and high tunnels. And since I am not uh, looking for that type of structure, I'm not really gonna speak to the details of how you can construct that. There are lots of more farming focused channels that can take you through that. Greenhouses historically are incredibly inefficient structures. And I learned a lot more about this as I went through the process of researching what it was that I was looking for and what I wanted to spend my money on. They're very trendy right now. Trends generally mean that sometimes people make compromises on buying less expensive structures that maybe fit their needs because budget also has been a factor for almost everyone during the pandemic. But um, if you're putting an electrical or gas propane heater in and you're not making sure that you're buying something that has, if it's glass, if it's got glazing or rubber glazing, which is another more common way to do DIY glazing these days, if you're not making sure that at least the structure is energy efficient, you're sort of gonna be, you're fighting an uphill battle in terms of, of heating it. But that, and so they're not necessarily as environmentally friendly, I think as um, local, organic, and, and some of these words kind of convey. Adding supplemental heat to anything is energy consumption. But on the flip side of that, there are more passive ways that you can heat a greenhouse. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into this after I finalize the complete design for the flooring. Um, there are two ways that I have been researching that are passive. One is passive solar, which is a passive solar water system that circulates water heated from the sun that absorbs the heat from the sun and circulates it to take the temperature up. It, it can do maybe five to 10 degrees, which frankly, except for all of the coldest nights of the year here would be perfectly sufficient for me here in zone seven. The other thing that people have been doing is doing a sort of modified geothermal by making uh, passive solar heat sinks under their greenhouses. So that's digging into the earth and using the insulation of the earth. And we could really geek out on this and I'm still doing my research for how I can do it in a way that will, will work for what I need, which is to just make minor changes to the temperature without adding an electrical heater or a gas heater because I am not interested in increasing my energy consumption for the sake of having my greenhouse. All right, already a lot of talking without finishing the coffee. <clears throat> okay, so taking you through some basic greenhouse terminology that's gonna pop up as you're reading descriptions and doing research. A gable end is the two walls at the either end of the greenhouse, depending on the orientation, that has the triangular space also above the wall to support the roof structure. Greenhouse terminology calls the sidewalls, which is a much more natural term for me, but they call these typically curtain walls, I guess, because they're kind of taking the roof and then extending it down. So these are the two walls that are not gable ends. If you're doing a three-sided structure, whether that's a lean-to or a uh, gable-ended high-pitched conservatory or something like that, you're generally only going to have three of these walls, but which ones you're going to have is going to be dependent on the overall design. Uh, a really important thing to keep in mind because I think aesthetics are changing is the ridge height, and this is the measurement from the ground all the way to the top of the roof peak. This does not account for any additional openings or things like that, but you want to pay attention to ridge height. The less expensive the model, the lower the ridge height's going to be. And while these are still perfectly functional greenhouses, I think as aesthetics change, um, you're going to see ridge height was something that I really focused on because there is something kind of 
grand and interesting from a design point of view to have a high ridge height. Glass to ground, this is really simple. It just means the glass panels run all the way to the ground. This is a design choice. Not every manufacturer offers it and um, traditional greenhouses typically would not be glass to ground. But again, it's a slightly more contemporary style that I think is fitting into the changing aesthetics in the garden where we're taking classic kind of older, I mean, going back to Victorian age, the idea of a greenhouse and bringing it into contemporary gardening. A knee wall, this is a wall that you use with those greenhouses that are not glass to ground. It's some sort of wood or block or stone wall structure up to about 36 inches high that you then put the glass structure on top of. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting an extra grand height that's gonna again depend on the glass structure that you're using. Foundation <laughs> should be fairly self-explanatory but the foundation is whatever you're going to be placing the building on. They are generally gravel with some kind of timber framing around it or depending on how heavy the base, the, the glass unit that you're putting on top of it is, it may be either a concrete slab or a dug out and poured concrete wall that, that's framed and poured in place. Other specifics, ridge vent, these are, are the, these are generally triangular roof segments that lift up, uh, usually on some kind of thermostat control to allow for ventilation. Heat rises, greenhouses are designed to heat up and you're gonna need somewhere to let the excess heat out. Uh, roof vents are windows like a skylight that also have a mechanism for lifting them up when the temperature reaches a certain point uh, for ventilation. Louvered windows are a window with slats like blinds that rotate on individual axes for the panels and open and close to allow air circulation. I definitely needed more coffee. I forgot that I wrote this whole like definition, greenhouse dictionary thing. Tilt or awning windows are windows that open from a top hinge with a support bar that both supports them open and pushes them out. These can either be manual or there are temperature controlled ones. Casement windows, probably the greenhouse window that is most commonly found also in homes. Casement windows have uh, their hinges on either the left or right side and they are opened with a crank again with a push and support bar that pushes the glass out and brings it back in. Uh, generally, casements are not going to be temperature controlled. They're going to be something that you can crank open or closed. Grain or shoot windows are the opposite of awning windows. They open from a bottom hinge, so they definitely need a support that pushes them out and pulls them back in. And uh, again, they can be temperature controlled. And then lastly, you're gonna hear a couple of things uh, that different manufacturers refer to in terms of glass. Single pane glass is very straightforward. You wanna be making sure first and foremost with any greenhouse that you're looking at tempered or safety glass. Anyone that's offering just straight, clear glass, this is, this is not safe to be out in the garden between wind and debris and things falling on it. You need to make sure that you're working with safety glass. So see, a uh, single glass greenhouse is going to have a single sheet of glass, generally three to four millimeters thick, uh, held in some kind of frame. Uh, the framing of it is referred to, uh, the glass and framing together are commonly referred to as glazing. Um, double pane glass, less common at the lower price points, definitely very common at a high price point. This is double panes. This is two panes of glass that are put together usually with a thermal, what's called a thermal break. Thermal insulation is very similar to taking uh, what people are doing now with their hoop houses, which is uh, blowing warm air, blowing air between two layers of plastic. It's the, the break between those two panes and that air channel that prevents heat exchange. So it is definitely much more expensive, not just because you're using two layers of glass and likely some kind of like efficient gas like argon between the two layers of glass, 
but also the framing and channels that hold the two pieces of glass together rigidly are much more robust and expensive. So the, the double pane pricing you're going to see out there is certainly going to climb rapidly. And then lastly, the most common type of plastic rigid board you're going to see used as an alternative to glass is polycarbonate. Uh, polycarbonate unfortunately looks like plastic. It is two thin layers of plastic with corrugated channels between it. It typically does not look completely transparent. If you see a plastic greenhouse that's, that's completely clear, it's likely using plexiglass or acrylic, both, are with, both of which cost almost as much as regular glass. So it's a choice. And since uh, my background is in retail store fixture design, I have a lot of experience with acrylic and plexi. And unless it's treated with something, it's going to become scratched and cloudy when exposed to the elements. It's just not a surface that I think is the equivalent of glass. Just be cautious if you're buying something that says it's got completely clear plastic. You wanna know what the protective finish is on it because just dust from in the air can scratch up the surface of acrylic. It's a very, uh, the, the, the clear, clear, clear finish of it, which is the goal with glass, is not as durable. So it's just not gonna hold up in the same way. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through my research on the uh, brands that I explored as I looked for a greenhouse to fulfill my design vision. I made several videos about the planning and redesign of this space. And I am specifically looking for a 10 by 10 black greenhouse. Uh, so one of the things that I'm not going to shy away from on my channel is talking about costs. Now, I really do understand why people, uh, certainly bigger garden channels than myself, are afraid to talk about cost. There's a lot of judgment online. And I think maybe because I have spent 10, 12 years in the luxury space, I don't think there's anything wrong with talking about things that cost a lot of money. Because I'm not saying that that's what you have to do. Every person gets to choose their own budget. Every person gets to decide what the word expensive means to them. And it's kind of a misconception, I think, that just because somebody's willing to spend a lot of money renovating their garden, that they're willing to spend a lot of money on everything else. I wouldn't judge anybody for having any one of these, but I think if you're one of if you're like me and you're sometimes frustrated by the lack of transparency on some of the bigger gardening channels, I think the only way that we can ensure that the information is shared is to take the level of judgment down a notch. Just because it doesn't fit in your budget doesn't mean that somebody else shouldn't spend it. You know, what's expensive to you is not expensive to somebody else. And just because somebody bought a $200,000 greenhouse doesn't mean they're saying that you have to have a $200,000 greenhouse. If I had $200,000, I would probably start building another house somewhere. So, you know, not a greenhouse. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, if you want more information out there, the level of judgment has got to come down. And at the same time, as gardening influencers, the gardening community, if you make videos, I think we need to talk more about costs because one of the things that creates a lot of backlash in the community is not being transparent about what's given for free, what's given at a discount, what's being promoted. And to me, that's the most important thing to maintaining integrity of information out online in the gardening space. So. Okay, so with all that said, let's jump into the most expensive page in the research, Hartley Botanic. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're not the most expensive, but that's partially because their biggest weakness, in my opinion, is not having transparent online pricing. It's very hard to find information on what an actual Hartley Botanic greenhouse will cost you to order and then cost to install it. 
I'll tell you that I've done a lot of research and come up with about a $75,000 base figure for most of the smaller models. And I'm not even gonna get into the giant ones, the 40, 50. You're talking up to $500,000 for some of these giant ones. Let's go through a couple of pros to them. They're, well, besides the fact I generally didn't write down if I thought they were beautiful or not. I don't think I would have included them if I didn't think they were nice looking. <laughs> um, they have very generous footprints, even for their what would be considered like smallest base models. Their ceiling heights are gorgeous. Ceiling height, really ridge height, is one of those things that's really going to make something look expensive. It's just an aesthetic choice right now that I think really, really helps. Um, they have so many cool interior accessory options just based on Googling and reading through their catalog and all the things that you can do inside of them. It, it, I mean, it's like making yourself another little house. <clears throat> and they've been around for 80 years. They are a UK based company. They do import. They have sales office here in the United States. Um, they are considered, in my opinion, though, as close to the custom builder options that I explored. Um, and they're they're coming at a premium. So do I think everyone needs this? No, it certainly was not a choice I ever really considered for this. Just knowing the budget, but also knowing these are pretty permanent structures. So on the con side, I did think their their lowest price where I based on square footage and looking now, now that I've done so much research, I've almost become a greenhouse calculator in my brain. Uh, their, their least expensive glass to ground models have really low sidewalls, which again, low sidewalls means low ceiling height, which means less glass volume overall to bring the price down. But they also don't feel as expensive, even though for, from uh, from a mid to low price range, they're still well above that. We're talking thirty five, forty thousand dollars. They're not. They don't feel as expensive to me. This is just going through their catalog and lots of research and, and looking for people who actually own them. Uh, their their latest modern introduction seems small and very limited. They really only have this. Um, uh, the shed roof, the, the pent roof is the newest like intro to greenhouse manufacturers. It's related to the studio shed, she shed kind of thing that was happening a few years ago and then really took off during the pandemic as people worked from home. Uh, I think Hartley's modern options are very limited and they look small footprint wise. I also don't think this is their customer, so I, I can sort of see why they don't go after that. <clears throat> now, everything I could find points to Hartley's being double glass, so thermally insulated double glass. So again, a more expensive option. This also means that you need a much more expensive foundation. You could not build a double glass greenhouse on a gravel and timber foundation. The weight of it is too much. So it has to be a concrete slab or a concrete wall or a combination of concrete and block. So again, you're adding on to that extensive installation cost because they look complicated and, you know, most people are not able to pour concrete foundations themselves. Okay, so I happen to be in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and found that there is a very large glass manufacturer, glass structure and glass door and window manufacturer here in Pennsylvania named Solar Innovations. And so I went through their sales process of quoting out, originally I was looking at a three-sided, very tall floor and a half glass building. And then I have modified it since to a freestanding 10 by 10. Uh, they're still out of my budget at $45,000 to about $75,000. Uh, they look more difficult to put together, so then I would add another thirteen dollars to $15,000 for installation onto that. 
uh, I did really enjoy the sales process. I liked the person that I was working with. They send you shop drawings to give you a really clear idea of what you're looking for. Um, they were building it in Pennsylvania. Um, the pros of it were you can have it built to whatever you need it to be. So if you have a tiny backyard and you need something to fit into like an L shape or an angle, they can make it happen. Um, you can also have whatever sidewall height, ridge height, if you're adding it on, like I grabbed this photo where it's obviously an architectural extension of a home, you can have them match pitch perfectly. Um, they, their standard offering is double wall. I actually did get them to break down pricing on single wall for me, but it didn't bring it down enough. That's because the, the framing that they use is automatically extruded to have two panes of glass. So you're not really saving too much money going that way. They have very nice looking uh, aluminum framing, the rafters, the, the wall studs technically that are holding the glazed pieces, it all looks really nice. They offer about 10 standard colors. And then for an additional fee, you can have everything powder coated in a custom color. Um, they also, because they're the door and window manufacturer, they do those like crazy rolling walls or bifold doors and things like that. You can have pretty much any door or window you want. Um, I did find that their door pricing, because I was looking for sets of double doors, I was looking for, a, you know, a pretty generous ceiling height. I found that the cost of their door kits uh, and their custom sizes for the casement windows and things like that were very, very high. So again, something to keep in mind, they do offer a really cool ridge vent option because they build these pool enclosures, greenhouses, conservatories, they build all kinds of stuff for truly architectural applications. They have some pretty cool HVAC and things like that that you can build in. Uh, and their accessories are, are, their accessories specifically targeted for greenhouses seem fairly standard. And we'll get into a little bit of that after I tell you which one I got. <clears throat> uh, the cons for me from Solar Innovation, even though I did really like my salesperson and the person that was doing the shop drawings for me, they just were not within my budget. I actually listed out the budget on the sales sheet and kept getting back quotes that were like four or five times what I was looking to spend. So I feel like that was maybe, you know, I get there's a disconnect on my side. I obviously was not in the same ballpark of where they were trying to be, but I do feel like the process could have been streamlined if they were a little more upfront with like, here's where we kind of come in base price per square foot. That's all I'm looking for. I don't want any of these companies to like lock me in, but if I want to build a 120 square foot greenhouse, it would be great if the website just had a range that says like, you're looking at $150 a square foot from us, or in Hartley's case, it's probably like 220, something like that. That's all I'm looking for. That will help all of us out there make better decisions and know that we're not wasting everybody's time by going out trying to get quotes. So as much as I appreciated all the information and it really did teach me a lot, it, it was never going to be the right fit. <clears throat> Uh, again, they're double glass, they need a concrete foundation. Because they are built to architectural spec, you may need either an architect, but you will definitely need some additional permits and approval. I think based on the type of structure and foundation, it's going to be pretty hard to call these a temporary structure, which is what you're gonna have to check your own zoning. I did a lot of research and there's size and permanence attached to what the rules are. So you might also need an architect to get you through that approval process, which is, an, again, an additional investment. So let's say if I went forward with the concepts that they gave me, which believe me, I did love, I would say all in, I'm around $100,000. Okay, so now getting into some of the kit options. Uh, what I would call a kit is a, P, a greenhouse design that can be delivered to you flat packed. 
packed. Now, flat, not flat packed like two cartons from Ikea that you can stick in the back of an SUV. These are coming on pallets. These are coming in huge packing crates. They are generally panelized or a system um, that you can put together as a homeowner or with, you know, some handy support. But that's what would be a kit. It is a greenhouse structure that can be broken down and put into boxes and shipped to your home for you to build on site. Now, that's not to say that the previous two, the Hartley and the Solar, don't come also in parts, but they're generally also going to need an installer to receive them on the other end. Kit puts it close to DIY level, though that's gonna really depend on your level of expertise. So let's look at Gabriel Ash. Uh, there's lots of choices for Gabriel Ash. They are the RHS pick for greenhouses. They're very big in UK. They're in English, a British company. Um, they're, they use a cedar and aluminum combination that I do think is really beautiful. They have a US distributor through Greenhouse Megastore. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's try to scoot me over. Okay, so I ended up picking the model, the Wisely Plant House. Uh, that, this is based on Gabriel's website. Greenhouse Megastore doesn't have this one listed. Uh, they can get it. <clears throat> they can get anything from the catalog. You just have to, you know, deal with the lead times. So uh, this one was close to what I was looking for at a little under nine by 12. It had gorgeous roof height at 11 and a quarter. Uh, the sidewalls were almost seven feet tall, so really nice. And the high sidewall height was important for me because I really do want my doors to be on my curtain walls. And that'll be part of the layout discussion. Um, so my pros, I said, they're cedar, aluminum, and tempered glass. They're standard base models, like off the, off the boat here to the US. They're beautiful. So they have this really beautifully designed full length ridge vent. So the entire roof cap, the ridge vent lifts up to vent out through um, a temperature controlled release. Um, they had by far the highest sidewall height of any of the kit models that I looked at. So if height and having doors on the side is something that's important to you, this is their model that does include a double door on the sidewall. Um, and it's, it's designed in panels, so you can actually get it made longer if you need to. Um, so the cons on this one for me were there weren't the exact dimensions. The door placement is fixed. They can't do two doors, which was something that I really wanted. It's about a six month lead time and they don't offer glass to ground. So I, I believe this price, I would have to email uh, I, I loved talking to greenhouse mega stores, uh, custom or import greenhouse specialist, Jerry, who was really cool. He's very well informed, been in the industry a really long time. But again, these are panelized kit options, so they're going to be less customized. And you start to see it in the pricing as we go through this. They're, you, the, the lower the price, the less the changes you're going to be able to make. So. There was no glass to ground option, so you had to either build your own knee wall to put the cedar and aluminum structure on top of it, or they would include the cedar planking for the lower portion of this. And the six month lead time to be expected with everything that's going on. But ultimately, this one was rolled out not because at $22,000 plus about $5,000, it was well above the 15 to 20 I was trying to stick to. It also just wasn't close to the right specs that I wanted and I wasn't willing to spend that much money to make the compromises. Okay, next up is BC Greenhouses, also sometimes known as Cross Country Greenhouses uh, out of uh, British Columbia. And they are brought into the country by a couple different distributors. You can also order directly with them. That's the route that I went. 
They are a smaller company who is experiencing some growing pains during the pandemic gardening boom. So there was a few things in the communication process that I didn't feel like were great, but at the same time, I can sort of understand. Everybody's really, really overwhelmed right now. <clears throat> okay, so they offer four pretty standard models with different roof pitch heights, and the Cape Cod is their highest roof pitch. So it has a very sharp 45 degree pitch, sometimes called 1212, I think. It's a whole other thing. Uh, but their ridge height was very nice, generous at 11.2 or 11 feet, two inches. However, their sidewall height, to get that height, their sidewall height is five foot six. Now, I'm five foot five. So it's not so much that I need these sidewalls to be super high because I don't want to hit my head. Although I think if you were a six foot plus gardener, I have a brother who's six foot four, six foot five, he would not enjoy sidewalls that low. However, my main concern for paying attention to the curtain wall or sidewall height is that I want doors on the sidewall. And a five foot six door is not gonna be functional for anyone. And so that's a big concern. That's another reason to pay attention to what that eave height, that sidewall height is. Uh, their doors were fairly narrow at 32 inches. However, and they offer black, uh, sorry, they offer white and kind of a dark green as their two options. Um, so pros from them, they were an affordable kit option with the standard greenhouse coming in at just under 15K delivered to me in Philadelphia. Uh, it's also just over 10 by 10, which I had anticipated it not being exactly 10 by 10, uh, so I could make that work. It's, it's eight inches over by the time you add in the framing and things like that. <clears throat> Uh, so there's a few things about it that ended up on the con list. So the door can only go on the gable end at the current configuration. So that's the off the rack kind of no customization because you can see in the photo, the sidewall height prevents you from being able to put it over there. Uh, so if I wanted to put a door in the sidewall, I would either have to put a 26 inch knee wall or spend $5,000 to extend overall the sidewall height. Um, the windows, in my opinion, are not really windows. They're sort of small boxes that fit into their glass panels uh, and do not really provide a ton of ventilation. Right now their lead times are incredibly long. Uh, it's actually probably crept up from here. The, when I was emailing, it was eight to 10 months. It could be up to a year now from another distributor that carries them, or maybe they're just prioritizing the orders they get in-house first, and then uh, the ones going through distributors are taking a little longer. So everything that I wanted to customize on it, including um, getting the doors onto the side, adding in double doors, adding some extra windows and ventilations brought my total quote, oh, and painting it black, brought the whole thing closer to $30,000. Again, over budget. <clears throat> and while I do understand that they're a company that doesn't modify a lot, they're really built the business on these kind of kits that are fairly straightforward to assemble. I felt like the level of cost for the customization was more about, and I guess I can sort of relate to this as somebody who does mostly custom work for weddings, like the cost for the customizations felt high because we were, I was asking them to do things that were not standard to their line. Like they have an option for getting the door into the side, but it's not something that they do regularly. Uh, they offer a pretty expensive upgrade to a commercial door with a lock. But again, I just don't think it's something that they do a ton of. So they were the, the salespeople that I dealt with were really sweet. Communication was really slow. But again, I think it's due to them being overwhelmed by people looking for greenhouses.
Okay, so now we're going to get into three models from Janssen's of Belgium, but we're American, and so here it's Janssen's. Uh, so Janssen's, I would say, is maybe one of the oldest commercial greenhouse manufacturers. Uh, so we're going to look at a few options from them. Let's see. Oop. Doing something kooky. I guess I can go over here. Okay, so they are another kit company. They uh, offer, they, so there is an option to make the greenhouse the size that I wanted, though they offer, I'm still going off of their standard to make it actually a little smaller. Uh, they have a pretty nice eve, uh, ridge height of 10, 10 feet, four inches. Uh, their sidewalls are 6'6", six, six, and they offer a pretty nice set of double doors as, an, as a reasonably priced upgrade. Um, so I mentioned that I'm uh, modifying a base model. They're actually the base model for the EOS Victorian, so you're going to find that they offer a Victorian that has about a 9-foot ridge height, and then the EOS is the higher one at 10 feet plus. Um, their base model for the regular Victorian is uh, about $10,000 and the EOS at 10 foot by 15 foot is 11,200. So um, <clears throat> what I really liked about Janssen's and specifically this website, Greenhouse Nation, is that they had completely transparent pricing. Now, Customizations, modifications, all of that are going to change your pricing, but if you need to get an idea if something is going to fit into your budget, this is a great place to check out because they've got their standard list prices up there. Uh, so pros for Janssen's, they are a very long-standing Belgian builder, been around, uh, around 100 years. Uh, they import to uh, a single distributor in the United States, a company called Exico in Austin, who I have actually been in touch with. Uh, I got in touch with them maybe three years ago to start exploring a different Janssen's model. Um, they are very easily configured with their standard door and window options. Black is a standard color from them, and then they have a really beautiful palette. I'd actually love to see some of these colors in real life. It's hard to find photos, but somewhere out there, somebody has like a fire engine red greenhouse, and I would love to see what that looks like. <clears throat> and their base model standard configurations were well within my budget. Um, cons. There are some quirks to exactly where you can put vents, windows, and doors. And they do have an online configuration tool that does not always show you where these quirks are. So for example, there are two types of windows. One type of window cannot be placed in a left-hand corner of the wall. So that was interesting, however, I'm, I love the online configuration tool and would really encourage anyone that's kind of considering a greenhouse to play around with it. And then I'll tell you who to send that PDF that it gives you to, to get it priced out. But um, it's kind of fun. Uh, you can pick their different models. You can play with moving the doors and windows around. Uh, my dream, of course, is for someday somebody to take it even further and let you play with what shelves and fixtures and things go where. But it, it was a really fun tool. And the doors, the double doors, are reasonably priced and can be placed on any of the walls. So that was a big plus for me. Uh, this is actually the first, the Janssen's Modern. This is the first model that I reached out to Exico about. They were not importing it at the time. This is when I thought I was going for a slightly more modern aesthetic back in the the for, well, this I just really love this. Um, it's more expensive. It's a newer model from them. It has definitely some quirks to their design features and things like that. Uh, the standard model for this one, I wanna say is maybe 10 by 15 also, and that's in that 18,500 range. So 
definitely, you know, after delivery and putting it together, probably looking at 2022, but from my point of view, it's really, really expensive looking. Uh, they use this, this, this is their standard aluminum framing, which looks as expensive as some of the solar innovation stuff to me. Um, I'm not gonna uh, go through, the, the, those are basically the same pros as the previous ones. Um, the only cons I would put on this is that uh, the footprint is a little awkward. I actually was talking to uh, the person who I'm buying a greenhouse from about this one because they didn't start importing it until I had started asking about it. So you're welcome, everyone, if you bought one. Just kidding. It, I just, you know, I, I tend to be uh, a pushing things forward at the forefront. So I had found this on an Irish website and emailed Belgium, who sent me to Austin. And, and you know, that's how it goes. This is really who I am. So um, the shed roof actually reduces the size to me. I think if they could figure out how to make that where the, the roof meets the back wall feel a little higher, it would feel slightly more generous. This is maybe where that Hartley Modern has a beat although their back wall also looks low on that one. Um, and this is actually the lowest roof height overall, which was surprising to me. Uh, I think it's really cool looking. You can certainly do a lot with it. Uh, I was talking to one of the greenhouse suppliers about this one and saying that I felt like if they could make it eight by 10 or even like seven by nine, seven by 10, this would look so cool in like the back of a row house, like concrete garden, things like that. Sort of like a glass she shed. I, I think this is a really, really great design. And I hope it gets out there more. <clears throat> and then lastly, I included this EOS T model for pricing because I wanted to see this is not exactly the footprint that I wanted. It's 10 by 13, uh, but it was a, at the standard price. It was well within my budget at 12K. And it's just not, it's, it's a little too classic for what I'm going for, but I could certainly see an application for it. And then lastly, I just wrote, I'm just going to flash this up. I'm not going to... Um, read through every moment of this because I'm not the person to speak to this. Uh, Riga is a manufacturer that does more commercial style, farming style, greenhouse options, polycarbonate. Palram is a lower priced home to commercial option. You're gonna find that they have similar styling to the Janssen's, but at a lower price, again, polycarbonate and just keep in mind when you're looking at price, you want to check those sidewall and ridge heights. To keep prices down, they typically keep the footprint down. Uh, let's see. Certainly you could build your own uh, using two by fours as framing and um, car polycarbonate. Uh, I would say in most circumstances, this is gonna be a lower cost way to go, but you obviously have to have some skill. The other thing is there have been material shortages the last two years, price of lumber is high, polycarbonate been back ordered, been hard to track down since the beginning of the pandemic. So patience required. And then the number one thing you're gonna find when you're searching greenhouse, DIY greenhouses online is people who build them out of old windows. and. <clears throat> As someone who actually got rid of a ton of windows after renovating this house, though my sunroom has all the original windows, I think they look super charming, but they require a lot of windows to truly be a greenhouse. And I think the modifications required to frame it and, and irregular sizes and things like that make it, you know, a more complicated project than the the charming photos online would lead you to believe. Uh, I certainly did look, knowing my aesthetic, there's a couple of really great like salvage and, and architectural salvage places that I have checked out regularly and found so many cool things like old black industrial windows and things like that. But 
having built things, custom things. I'm actually in the middle of like three projects for a big wedding coming up. I, I'm aware of my limitations and my my lack of precision in some things. And so buying a whole bunch of sometimes costly old windows would certainly not be the best choice for my skill set. So. So what did I go with? I ended up going with the Janssen's EOS Victorian in my custom size. Uh, I think that all in after the customizations and changes that I made, my delivered cost is going to be 13,500. It's under where I need to be. It gives me some options in terms of my foundation. Uh, I can do the foundation simultaneously with building the foundation for the shed. And the lead times right now put it here sometime in mid to late summer. So I will be able to have it built for next fall winter, which is excellent because I actually just bought a tree that's going in a pot that needs some shelter for the winter. <laughs> I kind of bought the tree after I pressed send on the order and sent the deposit. So I bought my greenhouse from Janssen's through Greenhouse Nation. Uh, I really, really enjoyed working with Nick, the kind of customer service salesperson. Uh, he's very knowledgeable about greenhouses. He did not mind me, who got their Dr. Google PhD in greenhouse research. We talked through all the options and he gave me a lot of information to consider in terms of what I was trying to achieve with ventilation versus energy efficiency. So we'll talk a little bit more about those design choices when it's actually here because showing you just the sketch of it, it's a little hard to explain all the different bells and whistles, but it is a uh, 10 by 10, a little over 10 by 10 square. It has a 10 foot uh, ridge height. I have two sets of double doors on either side wall and then one is sliders, one is French style, and then I have two different types of windows. And I'm really excited about it. I was surprised that this is the direction that I went because like I said, I had been researching this company for several years, thought that I would want the modern one back then. And so I am really happy to have ordered it. Uh, and because they're a kit style manufacturer, but everything's built in panels, it actually wasn't that much money to make the changes to the overall footprint. And by cutting some of, you know, cause I'm not doing the 10 by 15, I still got some of the accessories. So I got my three windows. I got, I only had to pay for, I think one extra window and things like that. So, um, I'm going to put a link to the website below. I paid full full price for this. There's no sponsorship, no nothing. I just have always enjoyed supporting businesses that I liked working with. And while I didn't have a bad experience with any one of these manufacturers, I was really happy to place the order with Nick. And I should say that they are also in Austin, Texas, but they are not Exico. Exico is the importer of this brand. Greenhouse Nation is a website that sells a variety of greenhouses, including BC and some California and other area based greenhouse builders. So they're a great place to check out for pricing on a variety of types. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am excited to keep you posted on this. Obviously the foundation for this and the shed will be here well before this shows up. And, uh, yeah, they've got the order in Belgium. They're trying to get the kit built and it will hopefully get on a freight container and get over here sometime in the next couple months so that I have it to start building. Although I guess <laughs> I have to say I'm a little intimidated about building it in the heat of summer, uh, but I would not procrastinate putting it together. Obviously you want to make sure everything's there and looks good and nothing broke during shipping. So. Thank you guys for geeking out on greenhouses with me. I hope this was helpful for anyone that's considering one. I hope you'll check out all of the suppliers that I mentioned. And I really look forward to sharing more of this project with you guys. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.